then left, left it open for the fruit flies and such. Uh. <laughs> okay, I need to see where we're going. The clock is... How's the clock?
All right, you hunters, munchers, late for lunchers, and of course, my favorite, panties in a bunchers. <laughs> Welcome to the Norman Show. I am the manful handful, the wop with the bop, the guinea with the skinny, the guido in the speedo, the greaser who's a lady. <laughs> Please, I'm the last true man in the heart and soul, the undisputed, undefeated, uncrowned king of Pittsburgh rock and roll, the high priest from the church of rock and roll on the east side of what? Pittsfield, Pencil Tuck. And I'm coming to you today, streaming to you throughout the internet, dropping some shit on you, man. Some words. Which, by the way, I got because you know why? Because words are free. Got some notes I want to whip at you. You know where I got them? Got them for free. Notes and words. We can just gather them together. Do what we will with them. And maybe in the process, touch somebody through the mingling of notes and words. You add in a little bullshit, and you got the Norman show. Hey, uh, I have my friend Harry Bottoms here with me today. So we're going to have some fun with him. My friend Tom's here. Say hello, Tom. Tom got the coolest little organ. It's about the size of a harmonica. And, uh, and we know so far, one sound that it has is the wonderful Augie Myers cheesy organ sound. Like they used on uh, 96 Tears by Question Mark and the Mysterians. But if you ever saw a Question Mark, you'd know. There's no question. Hey, uh, I'm the Manful Handful, and I want to get with you. And um, I'm going to love you up. I'm going to take my loving arms, wrap them around you, maybe give a little squeeze on the ass cake. Oh, while I'm at it, bang, get over here. Italian foreplay. Get over here. That's how it starts every time. And before you know it, well, hey, let me tell you, don't tell me about Latin lovers. You know, there's about a billion people over in China. They got to know a little something about loving. <laughs> I got that line from Racetrack Mike. We're going to be doing his song today, his song, uh, One Car Funeral. You know, when I first heard, Mike was the first guy that I ever heard him say, he said, you, you're one cop, you know, over there. It never hit me the first hundred times I heard him say it, what a one fu car funeral is. What a one car funeral is when you analyze it, take it into the analytical. It's a hearse with a box and a bod. And that's it. One car. In other words, no one came to give you a boot in the ass on your way to hell. I mean, heaven. No one came. Uh, a one car funeral. How, how heavy is that? And that's how ex when I realized how exciting that little phrase, one car funeral is, that's when it started pointing me to working up this number about my dear friend Michael. Boston Mike, that's what he'd say. He said, he says, the girls, he, says, when I, he said, I was a tall boy. The girls liked me an awful lot. He said, I had the clothes, the hair. I'd walk into the room. And Racetrack Mike was always smoking a cigarette. I think he smoked when he slept. I mean, it was always like, you know how great it was in America when we just smoked? Like you turn on the TV and the host of the show be like, I do the how fantastic was our country when people just smoked freely. I had to quit that shit. I love smoking. <laughs> Loved it. Uh, you're still smoking, though. Harry Bottom says I'm still smoking. Oh, over here. You know, I do. You know what? Sometimes I do heat up pretty good. <laughs> and, and you guys, it might. The, you know, the people that tune into our show, uh, they, uh, these are the people that are, have a spirit of freedom, a spirit that 
soars freely. These are the people that are into what we're trying to deliver. Belly laughs. <laughs> we're trying to make fun of you in a good way. Shut up, Perry. <laughs> I was trying to I thought I would sold that one pretty good. Oh, you did. As opposed to just trying to make fun of you. <laughs> trying to make fun of you in a good way. We give you this. I mean, there's no extra charge for this shit. We lay it on the dining table. Question mark. Remember that. Do, 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 do. Question mark in his mysterious. That little organ part was so hypnotic. Go ahead. You know how I'm feeling about that? Nice! Feeling nice about that. Because you can, it's a bouncer. It makes me think of a friend of mine. Do you know the Pimp Daddy? And now that part right there, that's when the clown comes into your mind. And he dances so wonderfully. Do you know the Pimp Daddy from just north of Cincinnati? Yeah. I know, I know you do. Oh, yeah. He actually he comes from uh, Cowtown. Commonly known as Columbus, yeah. but the hip people call it cow time. You know why? Because back in the day, and I'm here to tell you, back in the day, they had cow shows there on Saturday afternoons, be, and because the college, the college, they would offer agricultural studies, and then they would bring their cows in and love them up, grab their asses, smack them on a shit can, get over here, you moo moo. Columbus, Caltown. Well, anyway, my friend, my dear friend, and his name is Bruce Nutt. Did you ever hear of him? He's a promoter. <laughs> and, and, and then some. <laughs> and he's my friend from... He, and what he is, if I would use one word to describe a guy, if we're playing that game, one word to describe this hunter, right? Bruce Nutt, out of... Uh, and we call him the Pimp Daddy from just north of Cincinnati. And the word we would use to describe Bruce not is Tom, a word that I like a lot. I don't know if you like this word as much as I do. I don't know if anyone could like any word as much as I like this word. The word I used to describe, Mr. Bruce Nunn. You know what that word is? Flamboyant. <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me? Flamboyant? Now that's a word. That's a word you don't want to waste. You don't just say that every day. When you bring the word flamboyant out, you bring a certain flair with it that my friend Bruce not never leaves the house without. I don't know why I'm talking about the pimp daddy. It had something to do with what I was talking about before when I remembered what I was talking about. Race track my <laughs> exactly. It was yeah. By way of question mark and the mysterious. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Tom. Thank you for clearing that up for our viewers, for our viewing audience. Hey, uh, we love you, hunters, and uh, we are so glad when you tune in and give us a chance to blow up your skirt. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, who's there to blow up your skirt? You know, when you turn on NBC, is anybody on NBC blowing your skirt up like this? They're down on their down on the ground like this, and your skirts. You know who that is? That's me. That's who it is. On his hands and knees, on his belly like a reptile. What's he doing? Skirt blowing. Now that gives you a little who. <laughs> A little well. I don't know. Uh, Harry's feeling it. I think, I'm just thinking, where's your shoe mirrors at? I, I think I just blew Harry's skirt up. Yeah, we used to talk about shoe mirrors. There you go. You know, you have a mirror on your shoe and you go stand by a girl so you can look up her skirt. <laughs> well, I say, I say that now, and you know why? Because I used to be a guy. And it wasn't so damn long ago. Now look at you, just turned a little on the flamboyant side. <laughs> no, no, Harry. I can't stand up. I could stand up to a lot of shit. Okay. But the word flamboyant yeah, should be reserved. Reserved, all right. For special men. No. And in-betweens. 
and it's fantastic. Hey, uh, let's get a song on. I wrote this song especially for you hunters out there in the land of the internet. You know, I don't know much about the internet. I have no cell phone. I don't push buttons and I don't text mothers and yeah, I, I you know, so a buddy, buddy of mine says, he says, well, give me your cell. I says, I, I can't give you my cell. I have no cell. He says, I don't believe it. I said, believe it. He says, well, how's your old lady find you? She don't. I, I said, I show up. For Christ's sake. Give me your cell. He said, I don't believe you don't have a cell. You think someone can't live without one of them goddamn things? Barking all the time and shaking. They rumble in your pants and then their, your ass makes a phone call. My, you know, on my telephone at home, it's ass never made one phone call. I bought it in 1998. And it still works what? Fine. Goddamn cell phone. Stick them in your pants and they're taking pictures of your crack and everything. Oh, the bitches. Who wants to see your crack anyway? Said Norman. <laughs> so he sits down at the keyboard with his trembling fingers. An old man on the fade. You look closely and you can see his candle going out. He's an old bag of meat. Well, they'd say a little saggy in the what? <laughs> Back seat. And yet, his heart is full of L U V. Um, let's just hit this number, and uh, because that's you know, once we hit this number, it's like when they sing the national anthem. At a little league game. That's when it starts. You know, it's a little league game. Once they sing the national anthem, that's when all the older brothers and uncles slip over in the woods and burn one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's what I thought happened. How you doing? Joints jumping. Pimps and hoes, but there's something missing to you show. And at a party till you get here. When you arrive, everybody get churned up. The joint come alive. You make my blue disappear. And at a party till you get here. Lights are low. Bands playing, dressed to kill, people swaying, and at a party till you get here. When you arrive, everybody get churned up. Can the joint come alive? You make my blue disappear. And at a party till you get here. And at a party till you get here. How you doing? Ow! Spilling out into the parking lot. Inside the joint, it's too damn hot. But it ain't a party till you get here. When you arrive, everybody get churned. The joint come alive You make my blue disappear And at a party till you get here I hope I made myself perfectly clear And at a party till you get here Till you get here it ain't a party till you get here, so drag your else, drag your ass over to the Norman Nardini show on Norman Nardini music on Fotch Book. That's how the old day goes would say it. You're Fotch. That's what they called it. Dr. Fauci, Dr. Face, Dr. Fauch. How you doing? It ain't a party till you get here, because you know why? I'm all by myself. 
I'm walking around these halls, East Side Sound Studio, aimless. Where am I going? I'm going nowhere. And then we'll get a few folks tuning in. And they start putting their good eye on us. And then you know what happens? I'm like this here. I get on the up. I got a little pep in my step. I get a little air in my lungs. Ah! And I start to feel it's like somebody. Hey, uh, I want to do your number. Somebody asked me if I would do uh, 412. Uh. <laughs> now, isn't that little honey? 412, it's a song about uh, the county of Allegheny. Allegheny. That has to be an Indian word, right? Tom? Tom is... Uh, Allegheny an Indian word? I think so. Monongahela definitely is, right? Definitely. We're going to do uh, Monongahela shortly. I've been promising to do it. But before we do that, let me uh, just whip out a little bit of 4-1-Teeny. Uh, well, you could get across town if you call a jet name. Take the back way, but that could get tricky. Don't get on the parkway, run breakfast or supper. Route 28 is bumper to bumper. You're going to have to tunnel your way through the 412. Now this here's a sports town. We got the Bucks. The Pens, the Panthers, and the Steelers don't suck. <laughs> we'll kick everybody's ass and we don't need a reason. Here's my favorite line. Every day we thank God, we ain't in Cleveland. <laughs> Never bit up on a we could chew in the 412. Now in the city of Chance, we drink Iron City beer. We ain't in West Virginia, but you can see it from here. I got a lot of memories running around my head. Things that Bill and Patty Burns and Sophie said. Now we the home of Mr. Rogers and Chili Billy. Gonna shout chicken on the hill with Willie. We got quite a crew in the 412. Now I've been all around the world. Now I know I wanna be. Living the dream here in Pennsylvania. Where I grew up and you can find my kin. Everybody's always calling everybody in. Three rivers running through. Mount Washington's view, folks like me and you. That's the 411 on the 412. 412. 412. 412. <laughs> yeah, boy. 41 Hey, um. I had a special request for that hunk of meat. You know, um, I'm going to mention it a couple of times today. Because, ladies and gentlemen, things have changed. Things have changed so much. Uh, May 30th, they're letting the monkey go. H, yo, May 30th, the monkey's out. The monkey will be let go. May 30th, this hunk of meat. This old bag of leather. This old grease ball. Finally cured meat. <laughs> Harry said, finally cured meat. <laughs> cured from what is what I want to know. <laughs> it's cured. Hey, uh, they're letting the monkey play. We're going to do it. We're going to get out and we're going to play... And I, I forget the name of the place, but it's official. We've played there before. We had a giant party there a couple years ago. And it was what I would call it. Here's the right name. The Pittsburgh Shrine Center Pavilion. And tickets, you can get tickets at Pittsburgh Shrine Center dot com. I'm not, no, you can get tickets at PGH. PGH Shrine Center dot com. Uh, May 30th. We're bringing out the old grease ball. And uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put on some type of halibut. 
a wang, dang, ding dong doodle, and we're gonna smack you right on your shit can. Send you back to your mama. You think we won't? We ain't pissing her on. Some mean hunters, man. May 30th. I think uh, doors are going to open at 3, and I think we're going to hit about 4 o'clock. And we're going to blow. I think my friend Shades is going to be on the show as well. I think Shades is going to open. And then I think it's all man all day. There won't be no candy assing. No little hunchers, you know. You know it's going to be meat. There's going to be meat and a table. The meat will be picked up, slapped on the table. It'll make a bang. Sons of bitches are going to pay attention. Sorry, I'm spitting. I do that a lot. Tom, I'm sorry I spit. You good with it? It's all right. Tom's played in... got an in umbrella in the car. <laughs> it gets and you played in bands your whole life, so you know what the hell this shit's about. When you get excited, you start spitting, slobbering. Like the Gallagher show. Okay, uh, I wanted to do this song. Uh, I've been threatening to do it for a minute. It's a... Uh, I probably wrote it about 10 years ago. And when I wrote it, it was because when I was just a precious little Italian child. Well, let me first, let me, let me ask you guys a question out there in the land of the internet. What do you do when a precious child comes into this earth? A precious child is born, and this poor child is only half Italian. I, I don't want to ruin your dinner or make anyone upset. I'm sorry I said such, such a horrific circumstance. But this precious child, it's only half Italian. You know what you do when this happens? I'll tell you what you do. Here's what you do. You act like nothing's wrong. And believe me, those Italian genes, they'll rise up. Let me dirt all over myself. Those Italian genes will rise up. No question. No matter what they're mixed with. You know what they're going to do? They're going to go like this here. They're going to fester. They're going to come to the surface. And that child is going to be a little guinea, just like you had hoped. Just like the world wants to see just another precious Italian baby. You know, when I was a little boy, I was so goddamn pretty. My aunts, they would come in. They would grab my face and stretch it and pull it. And they would say, you're so pretty, you should have been a girl. You know what I'd say to them? I'd say, hey! I'm all boy. That's about six. I'd say, hey, don't be saying I should have been some kind of girl. I didn't even know what the hell was up. Hey, uh, I'm going to do this song. And I wanted to tell you. The reason I wrote this is because this precious child, this little boy... When I was a little kid, my dad, Art, Art Nardini, who was the coolest dude ever. I don't know if you knew this. My dad was a caseworker. Believe me, if you opened a case of beer, he'd work on it. He was he was something. Uh, but what he was, and my dad was like a lot of dads from that era. He let my my mother raised us. My dad was the dad, but my mother raised us. I was never afraid of my dad. But I'm still afraid of my mother, and she's been dead for eight years. You know what I'm saying? But when I was just just this child, my dad would gather up the riffraff, the kids from the neighborhood, little monkeys, seven, eight of us, boys, girls. He'd gra just grab us all, and he'd take us down a river. Sunday afternoon. That would be the only day he'd ever do it, because he worked six days a week. He didn't want. He wanted to work Sunday, but my mother didn't allow it. So he would, to get out of the house, he would take the little kids down to the river and then we would go fishing. It was the first time I ever saw an Allegheny whitefish. Uh, how do you like that one? Do you like it? I don't know. Probably mine. <laughs> well, they were left over from Saturday night. So what are you going to do? Uh, but uh, he would take us down there and we would... Since we were under the control of my father, which was different than being under... When you were under control of my mother, you were under control. When you were under the control of my father, you were cool. You were doing what you wanted to do. And uh, so we go down the river and we do shit. Screw shit up. Uh, 
learn how to swear. How, you know, how does a kid learn how to swear properly? You know, I don't like the way these new kids swear. They don't use enough goddams and sons of bitches. They don't use it. I miss those guys that talk that way. Somebody said to me, you say goddamn and all. I said, I said, you know what? I said, out of respect for the guys that came before me. They're gone now. Who's carrying the cross for their memory? Me. Sons of bitches. Because that... All right. Now, this song, I've never played it before in public, so I'm going to screw a couple things up. And if you don't like that, well, not much I can say. If you want me to be perfect, you're barking up the wrong guinea. Because I'm not... I'm not perfect. Far from it. But you know what I will do? I'll put my whole Dago hot right on the table. I'll just take, I'll rip it out of my chest and set it on the table while we're conversating. Blood. <laughs> muscles. Well, not too many muscles. <laughs> muscles. What's, what a, what a great effing word. Muscles. Harry, you like that word? Muscles. I think they're delicious with garlic butter. <laughs> See that? He's always thinking about some kind of grub. Uh, well, you know, Harry, <laughs> when Harry was a precious child, he lived a wonderful life. He moved from trailer park to trailer park with his family. And then, when his parents became so successful, he moved to the biggest trailer park in northwestern Pennsylvania. And then he realized, by this time, he was a teenage boy, and he was starting to sprout and have thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and he realized that this trailer park was so fantastic that, that there was enough guys in the trailer park to make a band of all people that lived in the trailer park. So when he was in 15, 16 years old, he was in a... 14. In a, four, okay, 14. He was in a band of all four or five guitar players from the same trailer park. How white trash is that story? It doesn't get any more fantastically white trash. And I just love everything about it. Um, you know what the crazy part is? Some of those bands were actually pretty good. And, the, and then he had to come to the city. He escaped. He came for the weekend 45 years ago. More than that, maybe. <laughs> oh, 50 years ago, he came to Pittsburgh for the weekend with an Italian friend. Short as me, maybe shorter. shorter. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, okay. Monongahela. Did you ever go down to Monongahela River? I don't know if you guys remember, but the uh, Breakdown in Paradise album by yours truly come out about 91, 92, 93. All these years later, what the hell's the difference? Uh, it was shot, the album cover, Tom was shot across the, the Mon, and in the background on the hills, you could see Kennywood at the top, because we were in Braddock, historic Braddock, shooting the cover. My friend Pam shot it, great photographer. At that time, we also shot a different cover. It was called Living in the Lap of Luxury. We shot pictures for that title as well, and that was shot in my one of my studios where we had a combination kitchen-bathroom that was just fantastic. You can sit on the toilet while you made breakfast, you sons of bitches! You know what I'm saying? And we had photographs of it, but somehow they got screwed up and we ended up not being able to uh, use them. But they were fantastic. We were, had great shots of, you know, where the stove, well, the stove was like a plate, a hot plate, you know, and it was right. You could run it while you were sitting on the toilet. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Living in the laps of the lap of luxury. Um, see what you think of this song. Like I say, I'm probably going to screw up a couple parts, but uh, and that's the reason I'm afraid to get it started. Perhaps I'll think of another story I can tell. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> My old mama gathered us up 
Can we all walk over the tracks Down to that mighty water We'd go fishing for a carpet and cat The big kids would help the little ones The old man just watched over my song It'd be right there One of us would fall down by the water Put our feet in Sons and daughters Just working class kids We didn't know it was a blessing We would learn our life lessons From hell to hallelujah Here on the money banks Of the Monongahela All meet down by the river on Friday night after the high school football game. Everybody kicking back, throwing logs on a fire, sipping moonshine, man, those were some days. Playing our guitars under the stars. We was all from the same neighborhood. And if you needed a friend, chances of finding one was good. Down by the water We put our feet in These sons and daughters Was growing up quick We didn't know it was a lesson We was learning life lessons From hell to hallelujah On the money banks Of the Monongahela That's where I caught my first fish, got my first kiss, did some things I regret, like that first cigarette. Yeah, I still remember that time in December, we didn't think about it twice before we jumped into that water, cold as ice, yeah. So many years have come and gone, and we're still walking over these tracks. And now just the smell of that muddy water gets me remembering my old man. Now my kids bring their little ones, and as I'm watching over them all, I see that big river rolling by, and there's so much I recall. Down by the water They'll put their feet in Grandsons and daughters The same way that we did And now I know it's a blessing How they learn their life lessons From hell to hallelujah It's high time I gave thanks Money, money banks of the Monongahela. Of the Monongahela. Monongahela, man. Yeah, yeah, boy. Uh. I'm thinking about. Brown water. You know, the mar in the water is brown. The gainy, now that water's a little bit more green. But the mar, Tom, water's brown. It's been brown. The muddy, muddy banks of the Monongahela. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my esteemed pleasure. How do you guys like that word? Do you like the word pleasure? As much as I do. When you think of pleasure, you know, me and the old lady, we have a chihuahua. I'm in therapy right now for that, you know. I go to uh, meetings of men who love chihuahuas. Uh, but you know, I've heard it said, it takes a big man 
to walk a small dog. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you could make your little comments to your little buddy snoring, mocks a chihuahua, you know. Say what you will! But that little Mexican bitch broke me down like a shotgun. Swear to God she did. And she, when I get home tonight, you know what she's going to do? She's going to get up next to me, roll on her back, and then she's going to say two words. Pleasure me. And I'll take this hand right here and I'll rub her belly. And you know what she'll do? She'll chihuahua smile. And that's home. Hey, uh, I'd like to bring up Mr. Harold Gurley. J. Bottoms, ladies and gentlemen, of the old world bottoms, the old money bottoms. You know what I'm saying? The bit, the, the New England money. That's uh, old. That money's old. That's old. Mr. Bottoms. What happened? Come over here for a second and just give give him a little, give him one of these. How you doing? Would you mind strapping one on? <laughs> How do you guys like it when a guy straps one on? <laughs> what do you say there, Mr. Flamboyant? The word, you know what, the word flamboyant today. And not just the word flamboyant, but the concept of flamboyancy. If you know what I'm saying. It's the flamboyancy of a moment. It's just, it can be indescribable. And you know, it, it all depends on who you're with. Just like everything in life. Everything in life that happens is who you were with when it happened. Do you ever notice that? You know why that is? You effing manity. The you effing manity in each one of us compels us to enjoy us being together. These moments. And that's what's so exciting about this, this time. One year of being slapped on. Masked <laughs> You know, the last the, the when I was a little kid, the only masked man was the masked man. Mm. And his compadre Tonto. Remember Tonto? Jay Silverheels. If you want to talk about a flamboyant name. Yeah. Jay Effin Silverheels? Flamboyancy? A little bit, a little bit. I, let me get out my uh, ticket book and write him a ticket for severe flamboyancy. <laughs> uh, Harry's with me. <laughs> he thinks we're going to strap one on. We're going to do a song I just wrote a couple years ago. Now, this hunk of meat. This song is about a chick that we know. We all know her. Or at least in my generation. And uh, and we love her. And uh, I just wrote it a couple years ago, but it really, uh, it's a song about people that I've known in my life. And I put them all together into one woman's body. And it's, uh, we've never really done this with the full band. But uh, one day we will. Sure we will. You know what day that'll be? Probably the 30th of May. Exactly! Hey! Like a book he reads me. How uh, many years has he been looking at my ass? Well, 30 something. Yeah, okay. I've seen it dwindle. <laughs> you know, I lost my. Somebody says, I said, I lost my ass in a card game. I swear to God. I used to have some ass. There you go. Not my, you know. <laughs> I ain't bitching about nothing. Better start carrying some sandbags in your legs because the wind will blow you away. You know, if I straightened out my bow legs, I'd be 10 feet tall. Yeah, you would. I'm crazy by... Uh, what's, did you ever hear that song, Bow-Legged Woman? <laughs> Wrote a mess of years ago and it says, uh, not a, Folks, I'm crazy about that woman. Folks say she got it all. If she straightened out her bow legs, that bitch be 10 feet tall. How you doing? <laughs> uh... I like that. So simple, yet it says so much. Check this out. See if you know this girl. She 
she had man Plenty of them But things never seemed to work out Took on a woman one time Back in college Where she was living wild She might have had to do some more too Now all she wants to hear is a blue Hidden money, light server when she married up with that man. He had a woman that he kept on the side. Then he met that bitch, just up in rental, brought him money with him too. Now all she wants to hear is a blues. Man to band and moan and bad to the bone and. Throwing a show and a saxophone bow and put a big smile on her face. She found religion for a minute and she found something else. Comes in a bottle, pulls out a glass, and it ain't no goddamn good for your health. And after she's had a few. All she wants to hear is a blue. I like this part right here. Before I do it, I like to look real serious. She had a daughter. Looked just like her. I used to see that girl dance. She'd get out on the floor. Ain't one of them young fellas even stands a chance. Cause when she puts on them dancing shoes, all she wants to hear is the blues Yeah, the singing and bringing and guitars ringing Gets her to feeling all right Yeah, the time on all the rhyming is so sublime And keep her on for long nights And all she wants to hear Just like her mother dear All she wants to hear is the blues the blues hi <laughs> here's me boom because the blues had a baby and when they named the rock and roll remember when that album come out I think it was the album hard again Tom am I correct I think I'm not sure. I think it was the album that Johnny Winter produced for Muddy Waters. And J J Muddy had done his thing a few different times in a few different ways and totally established established himself as D A M A N, the man. And then Johnny Winter came in and did the same basically the same material and reestablished this man as the master again just being who he had been the whole goddamn time Johnny Winter did this for Muddy Waters and Muddy Waters did it for himself what a story right I got to see Muddy when I was just a precious boy sat right in front of him and what a manful what a manful presence when a man could be a man he could come into the room, smoke some cigarettes. Remember when he could just come in the bar and just start smoking? <laughs> Loved that shit. <laughs> Loved it. It's a different time in America. It is. Remember just smoking in bars? Yeah, uh, back in the day, isn't Blowing smoke, smoke on each. Come on, they're smelling like, like hell. Hey, uh. <laughs>
This next number was written to me. I wrote it after being inspired by this gentleman, and I use that term loosely, by this gentleman here you didn't hanging. Say, you didn't say play a boy, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you. Ah, uh, you know what? That's what? it. <laughs> when we when we start selling shit from from the Norman Nardini show, we start <clears throat> selling products. That's going to be one of our first T-shirts. It's going to be flamboyant. Flam. That's it. Flam. Just f flam. <laughs> Bang. That's it. We don't need the rest of the words. When you say flam, <clears throat> we know who you are, what you are, and what you're bringing to the goddamn table. He's flam. I. That's like when. Like when Moondog called me, he says, hey, he says, did you hear the news? This is about five years ago. He calls, he says, hey, he says, Barry Manilow announced that he was gay. He says, I could have told him 20 years ago. Says, oh. Flamboyancy is a great word. My buddy worked for uh, Barry when he first came out and he had his record, Mandy. Mandy, yeah. From Penn Hills. Buddy from Penn Hills. Irish boy. McGinnis. You know Sid, Sid McGinnis? Sid, sure. I know who he is. From the Letterman? Yeah. Guitar he was player. Long-time Letterman guitar played player. Peter Gabriel. Yeah. And played with a mess of folks, but his mostly was that, yeah. you know, 25 years with Letterman. But his first money gig was playing for Barry. <laughs> Harry used to work, had a day gig at a graveyard. And... Um, he would talk about it in the truck on the way to one rotten, stinking gig after another. And that uh, conversation was just bullshit conversation in the truck. But it must have stuck to my brain and my ribs because years into it, I started getting visions of a song. And I'd like to play that song for you now. With... The non-flamboyant man who inspired him. He, there was nothing flamboyant about the inspiration. Just in case you were worried. I was worried. I'm never worried. What, me worried? Yeah. Uh, and the name of the song is Graveyard. And it's really the full title. If ink was free, it would be... Words are free. I know. Ink, Notes are free. Not, ink is not a story. Yink. Yink a dink a dink. Remember Yink a dink a dink? Do you remember that song? Yeah. Ink a dink a dink. You know schnoz. who did it? Schnoz. Schnoz. Yeah. My dad's Jimmy hero. Durante, yeah. Jimmy Durante. Yeah. I got a million of them. Don't tell the girls in the back room where you got it. Entertainers. You see what I'm saying? Men that gave of themselves their personality. They slapped their meat upon the wooden table, bang with a thud. And that's how they made their name and that's how they entertained and that's how they got and kept your attention when people had attention spans. What do you do now? What? What are you talking about? People don't even have enough time to, to finish jerk. Don't even listen to me. Because I'm starting to get pissed at it. <laughs> pissed at it. You know what happens when I get pissed at it? Yeah, I do. I'm all pissed. Yeah, no, see it. But this one here, inspired by Mr. Harold Gurley Bottoms. That's a thing. You girls like Gurley. You guys like Gurley Bottoms, right? What? She should. Have. Who don't? Chicks like them. Oh yeah. Hey, uh, check this out. It's a thing called uh, graveyard, and it. If Pink was free, it would be entitled The Graveyard Shift at the Graveyard. Yeah, that would be. One, <laughs> two, three, four. <laughs> Had a gambling debt that I couldn't pay. Bookie said we'll fix that. So every now and then I might get a call to lay a body down double deep. Back off the road, only thorn bushes grow. It's a secret that I keep. On the graveyard, shift in the graveyard. There ain't a soul around. 
And this pick and shovel don't hardly make a sound When I lay a body under before morning comes around And the only witnesses are moon and stars On the graveyard shift at the graveyard Graveyard I gotta call to lay a body down Needed taken care of that night Said it couldn't wait to a later date Full moon was shining bright By the time I finished digging Felt my stomach start to growl Looked up to see the moon And heard the spirits start to howl Cause on the graveyard ship at the graveyard When the full moon come to town Spirits all get restless and they make a howling sound Then it gets a ghostly quiet Before morning comes around And the only witness is the moon and stars On the graveyard shift at the graveyard Graveyard I can hear the voices Of all souls been denied Tombstone and a proper grave on a grassy green hillside where friends and family gather, bow their heads to pray. A preacher and a couple of folks have a few kind words to say, but on the graveyard ship at the graveyard, they ain't a soul around, except in on their meetings. The full moon comes to town You can hear the spirits howling For all souls left unfound And the only witnesses are moon and stars On the graveyard shift at the graveyard Graveyard Only witnesses are moon and stars Only witnesses are moon and stars. The only witnesses are moon and stars. Only witnesses are moon and stars on the graveyard shift at the graveyard. Graveyard. Graveyard, you kidding me? Yeah. That's my TV show. That's my version. It'll be like Christ, I loved it. The Twilight Zone. It'll be a TV show. The graveyard shift at the graveyard. And every week we'll talk about the guy that works at the graveyard, he'll go out when the full moon comes in. He'll talk to one of the people who's coming out of their graves. Talks about why they how they got screwed up because they fell into evil gambling. Or they fell into womanizing. Yeah, you'll have it. Or a love of money. Money! <laughs> Filthy green money! Hey, um, uh, I got a number here. A lot of the girls that hang with us at the Starlight, I mean, these are some pretty good girls. They can hang with all this. <laughs> yeah, boy. A lot of these girls, they like this next number we're going to do. It was written just a couple years ago, and it was written after... I, I, was, I guess I did four years, pretty much exactly four years straight, every Friday night at the Starlight. And uh, what happens when you're gigging? After you're done playing, you don't fall asleep. I didn't understand that, you know, and I you know, think you know, people go on tour and they... I didn't realize, you get on stage, you play for 100 people. You don't need 20,000 people for you to be up all night from the excitement of all the enzymes and things that flowed through your blood that got you excited. You get 50 people rocking together, I'm up all night. I don't sleep. Then I, then you got to be up in the morning and get on your bus and all that bullshit. Because when we was young, you know what? We didn't sleep. 
We didn't need sleep. We'd play. We'd party all night, and then we'd drive to the next shithole. That's right. We didn't need no goddamn sleep. No. Some other goddamn band. And my mother band, you know, the mother band, they'd sleep. Davis Sons of they'd, right. they'd sleep. Davis. We didn't, you know, if there was action, if there was a party, if there was some human life, you know what we was doing? Smoking, laughing, socializing. Uh, for, for whatever reason. I got a good one. I told you I wrote this. Thinking of the crazy women. How much do we love women? I know nothing. Let me count the ways of loving the opposite. How amazing they are. They don't even know how amazing they are. I'm here to tell them. Listen to the little big mouth man as he speaks of his love for femininity. <laughs> this number is called uh, She Crazy. Because she is. And the first time I played it, my sister, Dust Pan Annie, my sister's amazing, and uh, put it like this, ain't nobody don't like my sister. They, they don't make people that don't like my sister because that's who she is. She's just the bomb. But first time she heard me do this song, I wasn't even thinking about it. I looked at her and I could just, she was singing the words. She had never heard it before. <laughs> I don't even know if I knew the words. But a lot of times when I write a song, the first time I play it, I, it ain't done. I don't know all the words. Sometimes you play it and that helps inspire you to, uh, it releases shit that's in your brain that you can't release without action. Like there's shit inside our brains that if you st put it like this, if I'm working on a song and I got a couple three hours straight into it and I'm like just locked down on it and I'm not finding what I need to find, you know what I do? First thing I do, I go for a walk. 10 minutes into walking, 20 minutes into walking, my brain starts to unclutter and ideas come. And it's the same with gigging. When you gig, if you have a song, that gigging gives you the, and, and you're looking at people's faces as you're singing the words, it tells you what the next word should be. It tells you if you're, the way you're putting the words together are reaching people. You know, that living those songs out in real life time helps songs become real and, and have um, the ability to reach people. You know, I was talking to Harry on the way over about writing songs. One thing about writing songs that we like to do is we like to keep our songs conversational. In other words, the words and uh, the thoughts, the sensibilities of, of the stories we're telling and the concepts we're giving you, it's all done in a very conversational manner. It's like, you, so that, in other words, it's not work for you to hear it. It comes at you just like a conversation did when you sat down at a bar and some drunk, whenever people could smoke, they would be, listen to me, keep going back to that. But people that could, you know, when you, you know, if you can write songs that sound like you talking to someone or someone talking to you, you're already further ahead of a song that isn't conversational, that has to take people out of their conversational norm to feel it. So in other words, if you make poetry that's too high knuckles up here, <laughs> high knuckles, whatever I that means. I, don't I, even, I just said it. It doesn't mean anything. But no, high knuckled up. When the words are so... Um, Aloof? I don't know what the word is. You know, so proper <clears throat> and so unconversational. Huh? Like conversation and what up? How you doing? You know, just and right after that. Did you see this? This happened. You know, that conversationality is how you make songs break people down. Before you know it, they're listening. And before you know it after that, they're in the song. They are the song. <laughs> Yeah. 
you don't like nobody, you can't tell her a thing. Leaves are changing colors. She tell you that it's spring. She crazy. Tell you one and one is three. Hey, she crazy as can be. The same kind of crazy as me. She don't get along with her sister. Don't talk to her brother no more. Her ex got a PFA on her. She fights with the neighbors next door. She crazy. Well, like a monkey in a tree. Yeah. She crazy as can be. The same kind of crazy as me. She's crazy. Certified. Crazy, got the evil eye. She crazy, she out of control. Crazy, she's still on parole. She crazy as can be. The same kind of crazy as me. Yeah. How you doing? with each other you can hear us all over town we make up in the bedroom picking up what she's putting down she crazy hey makes love passionately well she crazy as can be the same kind of crazy as me well she crazy Come along, crazy. Mind that girl straw, she crazy. Last time I was in jail, crazy. Bitch won't pay my bill. Well, she crazy as can be. The same kind of crazy, same kind of crazy as me. Crazy. Yeah, a little organ support. <laughs> um, she's crazy as can be. My sister, the first time she heard that, she goes, that's me, that's me. She knew. Why is she lying? Uh, we're going to do a song today for my sister, whose birthday was last Friday. Oh, wow. Uh, we're going to play her song. I wrote a song for her. And... Uh, are we gonna do that next? We could. Let's let's do it. Uh, we're gonna do a song I wrote for my sister Annie, and this song is called Dustpan Annie. And the reason I wrote it, I think I wrote it the same year that I wore that lion suit. <laughs> yeah, for Christmas. You're so Did you ever see that video? Very flamboyant of you. That was flamboyant. <laughs> I ain't kidding. I've only heard <laughs> stories about it. It's really embarrassing. I should have never done it. Good thing nobody really knew it was you. <clears throat> you I'm know, a... I, I, it was fantastic. I wore a little mustache in it, so no one knew it was me. Yeah. A little, like a pencil mustache, like Lenny used to wear. Yeah, oh yeah. He had a real one. It was like the thinnest mustache ever. Like David, David Niven. David Niven. Remember David Niven? Mm -hmm. Tom, do you remember? Sure. He was like English. 
told told us told all American men who not to be. But he was very dignified and very uh, proper, proper and cultured. And American men watched, and he always had good looking women. The good looking women, you know who they were into? David Niven. David Niven. Yes. My aching ass. American men were like, no, you know what? Yeah. No, not here. I think Hugh Hefner got the ascot in the smoking jacket from David Niven. Perfect. Wait a minute, did you hear, hear what word he just used? He used one of my favorite words ever. What was that? Let me get in close. Okay. <laughs> he used one of my favorite words, and the word he used was ascot. <laughs> Let me tell you, you put your ascot in something. <laughs> <laughs> I got my ascot in the refrigerator door. <laughs> ascot. <laughs> ascot, are you kidding me? Come on, man! <laughs> you see a guy wearing a goddamn mask card, just give him a slap right across his forehead, you son. Hey, uh, <laughs> like to do a song for my sister. When we were little kids, my sister's younger than me. When we were little kids on Christmas, my dad, you might know about this tune. My dad would play the Chubby Checker Bobby Rydell Christmas album. You you wouldn't remember that, right? This is right around probably um, 1965, 66. Let me check it, Bobby, right now. I want, you know what? Yeah. It was, and, and they had, it was really, uh, it was blending of cultures, kind of. Yeah, it was like when, when the, the my parents' music, you know, the, the, the swing music of the 40s and stuff, like when that became obsolete in the 1960s it was really became it prevailed for so long you know from it grew from the 30s through the 40s and through the 50s but by the early 1960s in the snap of a finger finger i said finger in 1964 it became instantly obsolete and it was instantly not cool anymore the truth is it was cool all along it just culturally hmm. took a face slap that it hardly, it took 20, 30 years to recover from. Yeah. It took Michael, Michael Bublini. Hmm. How about that prick? You ever see this Michael Bublini? He comes out, he thinks he's Frank Sinatra. Real yeah. Meanwhile, you know what? He's all right. He's pretty cool. He writes some decent songs. And, yeah. I can't get mad at him because to do that routine in today's world, mm -hmm. after the shit that's been shoved down our throats, mm -hmm. I love when I do that. Yeah. When I start getting excited, it just happens. Yeah, you drool. After the shit that's been subbed on, to, to come back and say, you know what? I'm going to wear a goddamn suit and sing songs that are written with the sensibilities of the 1940s. That, in today's world, is a balls move. Yes, it is. Yeah. That's the move. That's the guy. Not the guy in the fucking propeller pants with the cut up and, you know, and with, you know, 15 pedals on his bass guitar so up hey. a lot, you know, that, gee, no, not that guy, that's not the guy, you know who the guy is? The guy that's going like this there. <laughs> that's the, guy. the guy that's swinging it. Yeah. You know what he's doing? He's swinging his meat. Bing, 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 bing. Love that guy <laughs> in today's world because, you know what, he's showing his Corleone's. I am not of today. I am of Myself. Hey, uh, we're going to sing this song for my sister. That's Pan Annie. And uh, it's in the key of... Hey! Hey. Boom, 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 boom. I should pick up my guitar and play it, but... Do I really want to? Do I, I have to? Is there anyone making me? Okay, Knuckles. Hey, I'm ready to go. You ready? ready to go. Give me a key of A. <laughs> the very sight does make enemy. Her children say she crazy. She's a cleaning machine. Saw a speck of dirt on a kitchen floor. And it went to work. Don't see no dirt no more. Dustpan and hey. 
Her cleaning is uncanny Just panty And he loved her broom Like a banker loved his money Cleaning up that mess Like the ever read of Bonnie She's a white tornado When she gets it in gear She'll throw you in the trash So you best steer clear of any Dust pan in it Hey Her clean on his uncanny Dust pan in it Well And it Cleaning up that mess don't get no dirt on her dress. And she got a broom and a mop. And that bitch don't never stop. Well, she get up off a fan. Just fan at me. Elbow grease, a bucket and a brush, spick and span, everything sparkle. When the shit hits the fan, hits the fan. And it cleaned the house, said she didn't like the smell. Saw a spider on the wall, sent that spider straight to hell. When she finished with the job, she took a broom for a ride. Waving at the neighbors, she go flying by and hey. Just pan and it Well She get up off a of fanny Just pan and it hey. Hit me And it Cleaning up that place And it Got a big smile on her face And it She got a broom and a mop And it That bitch don't never stop She get up off a of fanny just panning. To my sister. <laughs> she got the dustpan. <clears throat> but to, I forgot to tell. I was going to tell you, but yeah, I started okay. bullshitting. A couple years ago, the time I wore the lion suit, my sister's kids, who were all nutbags, well... What do you think? You kidding me? They're her kids. I'm their uncle. Um, on Christmas, what they did was they went to Walmart, of course, and they bought a cheap broom and a dustpan. But then they did what gypsy chicks would do. <laughs> Let me tell you something about gypsy chicks. I like everything, Tom, and you know this about me. I like everything about chicks, di uh, gypsy chicks. You know why? Because they bedazzle their bras and panties. <laughs> but listen to me. My, my sister's kids, they bedazzled a goddamn dustpan. And then they wrote in shinies, blue shinies, dustpan Annie. And it was so white trash and so cheap. When I saw this, I knew it had to be immortalized into song. And the song just was showed about 20 minutes later. I walked in the goddamn door. What Mike's going to do? But uh, how great is that? That's paying Annie. Uh, Annie loves her broom like a bank and loves his money. Cleaning up that mess like the ever ready body. Come on, man. High level lyrics. Past the dust, I think I'm Garfunkel. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. I'll give you a goddamn slap right on your shit can. You think I'm you think I'm pissing around on any of Did I ever tell you about the time? I don't know if I told you. Years ago, when we were wild, we were wild when we were young. Nah. Well, you know we were. But we were wild, that. we were crazy, and all our friends all the only people who hung out me were with the biggest nutbags in town. 
<laughs> so anyway, I got this accountant, Tom. Straight guy, starting his own business. Really good guy. And he's has he's doing for me for a couple years. And he says, hey, you got any friends? And he starts a new office. And he says, hey, you got any friends? He says, you got any friends that I could use an account? He says, I'm trying to build up a new office or get some work together. I says, I says, well, you know, man. I says, I says, ain't none of my friends like real people. He says, what the hell does that mean? I says, well, the only people I know. I says, they're like different. He says, yeah, like, like you mean different like you? I says, well, like me and like worse. <laughs> and he's like, worse? I says, well, you know, people like they make money, but... But you can't talk about it. And you can't show it. I says, you know them kind of people. He says, you know people like that. I said, that's the only ones I do know. I said, they hang out in the basement of my goddamn studio. He says, well, if you know anybody that needs somebody to get some work done. I says, all right, I'll think about it. So next tax season come up. And this buddy of mine who was a, uh, he did shit he shouldn't have done to make money. So I sent him over to uh, my accountant, and the next day, I, I think I showed up for an appointment because it was tax season, and he, I says, hey, how'd that work out with my buddy? He says, it worked out good. He says, I said, did he pay you? He says, he did pay me cash. I says, I'm not surprised. And he says, but he says, he didn't feel good. He said, I think he was sick. I says, oh, okay. And I'm thinking cocaine flu, you know. Uh, he didn't understand it. So he says, yeah, he says, yeah, I don't like a cool. He says, well, right while we were talking, he went up, he got over, he went over to the sink, and he turned on the water, and he just started taking water and sticking up his nose and snorting it in his nose and spitting it back on his mouth. He was spitting it all over himself. <laughs> he, says, hey, he says, I don't think he felt real good. He says, I think he might have had the flu. I says, yeah, he had the cocaine flu. I said, he was up all night snorting that garbage, you know, trying to make some money. And then he shows up here. I says, I try to tell him not to pull that shit. He says, are you serious? I says, well, what do you think? I says, I told you I didn't know any real people. <laughs> hey, uh, anybody that's tuned into this show right now, what I want to do, what I'm doing is reaching out through the camera lens And I'm grabbing you right on the sides of your shit can. I'm taking a, giving you a couple slaps right on your ass cake. Like it's here. <laughs> Slap that cake here. How's that feel? That's done with love from the east side sound. The whole team here. We're not very nice people, but we are people. When you break, Tom, when you break it down, we are people, right? You wouldn't consider us to be nice people. You know what he'd give me? He'd give me one of these. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> he'd give me one of these. Sure. And you know, that's exactly what I was looking for. So We're on the same page over here, you sons of bitches. Hey, um, let's do a song. Oh, I was going to do that. Let's do... Um, let's do this one. I had talked earlier about Racetrack Mike. We're going to do Racetrack Mike song now. It's one car funeral. Wrote it for him probably five or six years ago. And this song sat on the shelves. No one heard it for years. I didn't know if it would ever breathe life. I didn't know if it would ever open its eyes, spread its wings, and fly. <laughs> didn't know if that would ever happen. And yet, like they say in the old Bible, and so it came to pass. And we've been uh, banging this piece of meat around a little bit lately. And it's for Racetrack Mike. And I remember the day Racetrack Mike says to me, he says, who's that old broad I like? He says, I don't want know what broad you like. He says, you know that old broad. <laughs> and we're sitting at the bar, and all, the only people in the bar was knuckleheads. There wasn't one regular person at the bar. It was all mutant musicians, derelicts, womanizers, dopers, losers, and racetrack bums. My people. And that was the early crowd. <laughs> well, that was the afternoon crowd before regulars, before the squares came in. We'd all get out of there so that the regular people come in and bring their chillins. <laughs> uh, I forget what I was saying. Racetrack. 
Sometimes I get off on one and I just start going. Uh, oh, but Racetrack Mike. I forget what I was going to I was going to tell one of his stories, but I can't remember which one it was. I'm lost. Uh, well, let's try and just do this song. Tom, I'm I'm bad meat. You know what I am? The old broad. Oh, the old broad. Oh, the old broad story. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who's that old broad I like? And I go, instantly thinking of all the, you know, yeah, sure. well thought of older <clears throat> women. In Mike's age group, I go, Liz Taylor. And he goes, Liz Taylor, that douchebag. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, my guy said she's beautiful. Not that old douchebag, Norman. Who's that one I like? You know, so I start naming other good looking older, you know, women. And uh, everybody I said, he said no. And then finally, the other racetrack bum that used to hang there, his name was Rip. And he's like, the whole time he's reading like some Shakespearean novel while he's smoking cigarettes and drinking whiskey. Yeah. And he goes like this. Everybody's yelling all these names of these good looking old women. Uh, you know, Zsa Zsa Gabor. <laughs> Not that old G bag. Uh, and then uh, Rip goes like this. He goes, real casually, he ups his glass and he goes, Debbie Reynolds. And he goes, Debbie Reynolds. He goes, that's her. And he goes like this. He goes, that old broad. She stayed up. <laughs> that broad stayed up. I put her, like, get the hell I eat so fantastic. And that was like, in his mind, all the other beautiful older women got old. But Debbie Reynolds, she didn't have to that bitch stayed up. That's, his, that's how he saw it. And you couldn't tell him no different. But anyway, we're going to do the song uh, I wrote for Mike. And let me say this. The racetrack bumps. If you're looking for men with personality, and men that can take a punch. And men that can live off their wits. And not suck on the nipple with some goddamn corporation. <laughs> <laughs> not them sons of... I don't want to know them sons of bitches. <laughs> Whatever, you know. Yeah, they're out there. <clears throat> Go ahead, girls. Find, marry one. He'll put some money in the pot. Believe, but when you, darling, when you need your grass cut, <laughs> he ain't the man that's gonna snap your girdle, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you son of a... Uh, let's do this number. Let me blow my snout. I've decided, probably about 15 years ago, I decided to never use the word nose again. I don't like the word nose. So I prefer the word snout. So, I did some Christmas shows uh, two years ago, and I did a wonderful version of Rudolph the Red Snouted Reindeer. Yeah. You'd have loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear that song? <laughs> it's very flammable. Get a close-up on that. <laughs> that was the most, <laughs> Tom, that was the most musical note I hit today. <laughs> 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 e flat. Oh my! Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, kidding. You know what they said about me? That son of a bitch wasn't good when times was good. That's what they said about me. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do uh, one car funeral eventually. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll send it out to Boston Mike. That's uh, how he saw him. He saw himself as Boston Mike. Boston Mike. We called him Racetrack Mike. Hmm. And we idolized them. Because we all idolized the spoken word. The spoken word is what brought us all together. Talking shit. When you talk, it's like living art. You know, today, and this is so effing true, and I'm pissed off about this shit. I'm really mad about it. The young bucks in our society, these young boys, they're at their most virile and dangerous state. You know what I mean? 
I remember they're 19, things. they're 21, they're 22. You know what? <laughs> you know what they're good for? Hunching and nothing. <laughs> That's all they're good for at that age. But they, these young bucks, they aren't learning hmm. no. the spoken word, talking shit. They look at their phones and they, they, you know, they can see they're punching and pushing and, and phoning and, and flipping from picture to text, things of this nature. I don't understand any of that shit. You know what I understand? Walking in the room and being somebody and saying like this, Oh, how are you doing, you sons of bitches? I'm here. That's what a man does. These boys walk in like this here. Following their phones around a gun. He needs a bib. You think I'm happy about it? Pat, well, that's what we're passing down. Our new young boys, you know what they do? They got their phones up their giggy holes. How about walking in and talking your way in? There you go. That's what a young boy learns. How, you learn how to do that when you're a teenager. Finessing your way! Putting the words together, one nice thing after the other. <laughs> feeling the snow. Feeling the moment. Hey. You know what I'm saying? One nicety after the other. And then before you know it, you got a hand on some meat. And you're just just putting a little muscle pressure on it. And that lets them know. I'm a guy. And I won't let you down, darling. Because I'll come in clean. And I'll come in strong. I'll snap your girdle so goddamn hard. Boston Mike. That's what he'd call himself. Two, three, four. How you doing? The voice rang through the barroom Like an actor on a stage He held us all captive With the things he'd say It's all tales of Cleopatra And the Roman Empire we would buy drinks to fuel the fire with a cigarette dangling, the whiskey on his breath. He'd be shot by some guinea joint where everything was red. Racetrack Mike was easy to like, but hard to get to. Bums like me were gone with the breeze Just a one cup in a row Mike followed the ponies From Jersey to FLA And he could spot a sucker There's one born every day Days he'd make a killing, but they were few and far. But he never had to spend a nickel when we was at the bar. He'd talk about New Orleans and say the place where jazz was born. Just drinking in a speakeasy, then in walks Lena Horn. Racetrack Mike was easy to like, but ain't nobody ever got close. He'd say, bums like me were gone with the breeze, just a one cup in a room. Everyone gives a thumbs up when he walks through the door. They don't make out like him anymore. Talk about Sinatra and some money that he owed to a wise guy named a Skinny. Then he say, How about one for the road? Now, all that's left is legend. 
racetrack bum still tell about this tall Mick from Bean Town on his way out of hell. His voice rang through the heavens like an actor on a stage. He held the angels captive on his judgment day. Racetrack Mike was so easy to lock, he just walked through heaven's door. They didn't seem to mind, he left no friends behind at a one car funeral. One car funeral. You know, when me and Harry went to the track, <coughs> Harry won the first race he betted on. What was the name of the horse? Uh, just a coincidence. Just a coincidence. <laughs> Harry won his first beginner's luck, as they say, right? Yeah. Well, we each won seven bucks on that one. Hey, how are you doing seven dollars? <laughs> uh, About one beer or something. <laughs> racetrack, Mike, man. <laughs> How fantastic was it? I'm trying to read that little card, but yeah, I see it, but I, I see two of them because I'm trying to so I knew that was going to happen. I knew it. I could tell that. Hey, um, Harry and I are going to do a number that we, and I'm going to use a big word here. I love using this word. Uh -oh. We premiered. How showbiz is me of me to use that, Tom? That's right. I've expected a little bit more from you. <laughs> for on my choice of the word <coughs> premiered. Ah, uh, premiered, yes. How officially business-like of me to use the word premiere. We premiered this number oh. two weeks ago. And I wrote this song because uh, a couple of friends of mine have been showing up at a little shack over in White Oak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don't tell the location of... Oh, that's right. I shouldn't have said that. I've already said too much. Mm -hmm. Oh, tall. Don't be too nice to me. Uh, believe me, I won't be after this. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, don't be too nice to me because I'll give it all away. Uh, I'd like to play this number that just recently has been, is being birthed. You know, here on the Norman Nardini Show, we birth numbers. <laughs> we don't play songs from 20, yeah, we play songs from 20 years ago, 30 years ago. But we also give birth. We watch the process of one being pushed out. <laughs> like the day, and I like that day when my father. I told you about that, right, Tom? You remember? Sure. I told I remember him. You remember? I remember. I told him about the day my father was born, Arthur Lincoln, when my father was born. February 12th, 1920. Mm -hmm. What were you doing? Where was your ass? February 12th, 1920. You know where my father was? He was like, his, his eyes were still closed. He was pushing his way out. Onto the goddamn kitchen table. That's where he was born. My father was born on the kitchen table in a Dago kitchen. Wheeler Street. His mother knew it was time because she had already had three daughters. She knew it was different. She could tell. She said, I knew this one's a boy because he can't wait. <laughs> so she jumped up on the goddamn kitchen table, swiped it clean first, and pushed him out. And there he was. Come out smoking a cigarette. <laughs> Why are you doing? <laughs> he had three older sisters. Meanwhile, he figures he's running the joint. Soon as he comes out. And you know the crazy thing? He come out, he, he was speaking broken English. But after he was two or three years old, he spoke perfect English. Like you could never tell he was, uh, you know, born to uh, people came over on a donkey. So I don't know. Uh, do you guys like donkeys as much as I do? Have you ever looked into a donkey's eyes and felt donkey love? Have you ever done that? 
Tom has. As a matter of fact, <laughs> what, what nice I, Cleveland. Tom, I didn't know you were a country boy. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? How the donkey is, it doesn't get anywhere near the props. You know, if I had a professional football team, if I had a perfect, you know, they're, and uh, they're looking for names for these, for the skins. Mm -hmm. I love that name. Uh, but I guess it's <laughs> because of things, everything's different. I don't understand yeah. it, but I have to accept it. But if I had my own team, I'd be in the Bruston. Mm. You know, there'd be the Pittsburgh Steelers. Of course, they'd still be here. Then they'd be who they are today. But I'd have my team. We'd be the Brushton Donkeys. That would be my pro team, the Donkeys. Just to put a little, because I would think that the Donkey needs more respect because they're hard working. They put a kick into things. There you go. I'll just shut up and turn it over to that man right there. Don't take much anymore. They put a kick into things. I don't say much when I do. People you know listen. how a donkey kicks? <laughs> Very flamboyant of that donkey. <laughs> Flamboyancy is at a premium here today. Oh, jeez. Help me. That's right. That's my new t-shirt. It's just going to be flam. Flam. Not, you, <laughs> not flam. Flam. <laughs> <laughs> and you hunters can <laughs> fill in the rest. <laughs> oh, if great. you have a mind to. Would you mind if I blew my snout one more time before we did this? <laughs> you know my snout. snout I don't know what the hell's up with it. Harry and I are going to do a little thing called HH. And I'm not talking about Hamburger Helper. <laughs> <sighs> Meanwhile, how much do we love some MF and Hamburger Helper? What a white trash. I mean... What a, a great meal for a white trash person. Hamburger helper. It's everything that you want. It really is. Mm. You don't feel so? I don't eat it. Sorry. Well, Harry does have his own culinary yes, ways. In fact, just the other day, I was telling him. I said, H, you should have a show where you just teach white trash how to eat good on the way he does because he knows exactly what you should microwave and what you should put in the oven. He knows exactly what to do with pineapple juice. Huh? He knows all these different tricks on how to make totally bland food the best that it can be. And he'll tell me, he offers these things to me. I don't cook, so it, the words go to waste. But I don't, but I notice, I go, Jesus Christ, he makes somebody a great wife one day. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I really see it. I mean, it's so true. He knows so many things that if you ain't got a dime in your pocket, it'd be nice to know. That's all I'm trying to say. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, but I'm just, I'm just bragging on you. Oh, I love you, North. Play some. He loves me! Play some so we can enjoy 20 it. minutes. Oh, 20, 20 yeah. minutes. Remind me when we got five minutes, because I, I want to play that one song at the end here. Okay. Hey, uh, Hunters, little thing called Harry's Hideaway. Um, I don't know if it's any goddamn good, but I know it's fun to play. I'd like to send it out to Scott and Kit Paulson, who have been following our show here. And I just think it's very interesting that those folks are following on what we're doing. For some reason, it fascinates me. And I'm not easily fascinated. But you know why? Because I've seen some shit, all right? You think I ain't? Think again, Hunter. Think again. I lived through the 60s twice. <laughs> the Hear 60s that. after the 1950s and before the 1970s, and then my 60s. Lived through them twice. I ain't seen some shit. I seen Honeysuckle Divine blow some goddamn ping pong balls about 40 feet out over my goddamn head. 1967, Camera Phone Theater, East Liberty. <laughs> you think yeah. I'm making that shit up? That's a true art form. Burlesque. One, two, <laughs> three. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, the boys go to play in the middle of the day. Somebody gonna bring some shine. If you grow a pair, I could take you there. Don't tell your old lady, won't tell mine. Yeah, we'll have a holiday. The Harry's hideaway. When you walk through the door, let's be ready to pour a little something in the Harry's cup. Then he shouts, Hallelujah, man, I don't do ya. Run and start to roll them on up. Yeah, it's just another day. The Harry's hideaway. Harry gonna do what he gonna do. It's all part of the show. He might sing a little ditty by Conway Twitty, might strum it on his banjo. Yeah, picking and a playing. The Harry's hideaway. At the hideaway, everybody got stories to tell. While the eyes away with a cold one, a rolled one, sit for a spell. Where the boys hang out, sometimes they scream and shout. Chilling with some old rock and roll. I heard Harry said it down, man, I'm glad you find a trail to this hangout for the old school. And they'll come another day. Boy, I'm gonna play. Chase some blues away. The Harry's hideaway. A heavy tide away, yeah. A heavy tide away, yeah. A heavy tide away. I'm telling you one thing, at Harry's Hideaway, that's where the boys go. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I like everything <laughs> about it. What do you like about it? Everything. Have you said hello to Harry Bottoms, ladies and gentlemen? He's got his own joint. Now he's running his own little thing. It's um, off the beaten path. You got to know someone to get in. And you got to be able to roll joints, you know. I don't know if you guys know this, but I've had the good fortune, Tom, and you. I think you know this to be true. I've worked with some of the greatest joint rollers in the history of rock and roll. You know, someone said to me, you know, back in the day, in the years ago, when we had the Tigers, say, you remember? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, quite. When quite. we had the Tigers, we was <coughs> banging, man. Shit was flying. We was young. It was our world. Do you know, like, yeah. when you're at a certain age, <coughs> the world's yours. Today, the world could not be described as being mine. The world belongs to this other guy. He's 19. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's 19, this guy. It's his world. The music he wants to hear, that's what they play. That's what they promote. Uh, it's his fruit to pick. My fruit... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Tom, don't say a goddamn word. Wide open, I'm ready to go. <laughs> All right. You know, I used to do that routine with my father. When, when my father was alive, towards the end there, 
at Santa Maria Papa. And we get, we go to parties with the rest of our family, and the rest of our family is like normal people. The, me and my dad were Nardinis. So, so we, you know, it's different. So I'd say to my old man, I'd say, look, Pap, when we get to the party, I'm going to put my arm around you. When we get with all the uncles and the cousins, they're all, all the guys are going to be sitting, they're all going to have a goddamn beer in their hand. And I'm gonna, I says, I'm going to put my arm around you. I'm going to point to you, and I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i say, you see this guy right here? My old man? And they'll all nod. And I'll say, let me tell you something. I'm the fruit of his loins. And when I say that, Pap, what you say is, you got the fruit part right. <laughs> and my dad said, and you know this, Tom. He said, I ain't saying that. <laughs> I said, it's a joke. I wrote it. It's good. It's good. We'll laugh. He says, I ain't saying that. I says, why ain't you saying it? He says, I ain't saying that about you. And that's never more in my life. That was my father's way of saying, I love you. I'm going to start crying. That's no bullshit. He didn't know. Guys from my father's generation, they didn't say, I love you. They never said those words. Those words never come out of the... The ne- he never said, I love you. But he said, I'm not saying that about you. Mm-hmm. And that was, I love you. How effing great is that? He wouldn't say it. He, I used to imitate, uh, Tom, you know who uh, Christopher Lowe is? <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Designer. He's very flamboyant. <laughs> He's a flamboyant. And my old lady, used to, he used to have a TV show. My old lady would watch him. And he was flam. And uh, and so I used to imitate him. And my dad, you wouldn't believe this, <clears throat> loved it. So he would always say, hey, hey, Norm, imitate Christopher. Do Christopher. Do Christopher. And I'd be, yes, father. And it made him so happy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know why I'm telling you this shit. Hey, let's, uh, I forget what the hell I was talking about because. You got uh, 10 minutes, so okay. that's like. Tell me when we got sides. five. Um, <laughs> Maybe one. <laughs> you never know. At this rate. I don't, there's, there's one thing I do want to say about my father that I don't like saying. Hmm. You know, I, I don't like um, saying disparaging things about someone I love so much. That's not my way. But I do have to get this let's get this said because it helps me with the healing that we all need hmm? to cut to, to the uh, the tribulations and the, the dark moments and the things that have in our life that have beaten us down. And now I finally come to terms with this: my father ate Fruit Loops, and <laughs> I don't know if there's a any other men out there that are struggling <laughs> like I've struggled with this if your father ate Fruit Loops and who do you tell how do you talk about it how do you start the conversation you know what you do you suffer inside <laughs> but now that I, <laughs> but now that I've said the words Tom it's the next office over from the men who <laughs> love Chihuahua but, but, yeah. Well, you know that. In the yeah, support yeah. group. Tom's, Tom's mentioning something, you know, my right. great, I don't know if you guys know this, I'm a brilliant business mind, and my <coughs> business mind has told me in today's world, I'm starting a new thing where I'm getting a, a strip mall. I'm buying a little strip mall, maybe 10, 12 shops in it, all small little businesses. And each business is going to be a workshop a group therapy for a certain particular problem that men have today. The most popular, the biggest space that I have, I'm going to definitely rent out to the folks at uh, Men Who Love Horse. Uh, you know, there's, I can't tell you how many men that I know who have fallen in love with horse. And you work through it. You know, you, you know, and what you do, you know, you get with other guys that love horse. And you know what you do? You hold each other's hand. And you know what you do? You yak it out. You talk it out. You put your arms around each other and you say, I love that old whore. And then his body, your buddy, the guy sitting next to you, <laughs> said, you know, she wasn't as big a whore as that. You know, and then, and then you know what? Before you know it, you're laughing. You're trading phone numbers. And, you know, and, and you're socian. 
and it's a new day. It's all good. Uh, you know, also, uh, men whose fathers ate Fruit Loops will be there. Uh, well, I forget the other shops in the, in the little strip mall. The Mental Health Strip Mall. I forget what we're going to name it. But what the hell's the difference, right? Because uh, if I don't wrap my goddamn arms around you and give you a big wet one. Oh, one other thing I wanted to tell you about today is, you know, as the young crime king of rock and roll, I can make proclamations. Like kings and shit. You know, like emperors. And guys that control shit. Guys that run shit. Uh, I've made, probably about 10 years ago, I made a proclamation. No, more like 25 years ago, I made it. Right when I first became Uncrowned King. You ask who, how did I become Uncrowned King? I proclaimed myself. And that was good enough. But one of my first, my first proclamation was, you know that bitch Patsy Cline? You know who I'm talking about? Remember she sang Quasi, the Willie Nelson song? And then she sang uh, this other one I've been messing with. I like these old songs. You know that one? I fall to pieces Each time I see So, what I did, my first proclamation as I'm Crown King was I proclaimed Patsy Cline had a new name. I made the proclamation. And I don't know who listened, and I don't know if it really took, because I was just into my uncrowned kingship at the time. Now I'm thinking about getting back more into it. And, uh, and what I did, I changed her name, because when I first started studying her, singing, and her... Uh, singles and her records, I uh, I decided, I said, you know what, this bitch is clean. And so I changed her name. Yes, she did. You remember? I did. Upstairs. From Patsy Klein to Patsy Clean. Tom, I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, I, you, you want to talk about a son of a bitch being right on the mun mun? Yeah! Me! Patsy Clean. You know why? Because the bitch is clean. When she's singing, it's right there. The tune she picks right there. I've got the pictures that you gave to me. Remember that one? She's got you. How about that one? Tugging at your heartstrings. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, let me do this one song real quick, and then maybe me and Harry can blow one out on the end here. Wrote this just about 20 minutes ago. That means in the past month. Um, I didn't really, when I was writing it, I, it's... I didn't want to write it, but I wanted to write it. Do you know what I just said? Don't listen to what I just said, because I don't even know what I just said. When I said what I said, I didn't say what I said. I wrote it because I wanted everyone that tunes into a rotten, stinking show to know one thing, that everybody is a somebody. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I make jokes and all that bullshit. But this ain't no joke. Everybody is a somebody. Everybody is a beautiful. And that ain't no bullshit. And I wrote a song that I wanted to play at the end of these shows to let you know, to reach through the internet, lay my loving hands upon you, and say these precious, simple words. Throughout your days, 
trouble free Let them be Everybody's someone To somebody And everybody's got a right Get through the night So let there be A light that shines upon you Let there be A wind that blows you away Let there be Prosperity Throughout your dead trouble free let there be Let there be a sharp place in land Let there be a helping hand Let there be a light that shines upon you let there be a wind that blows your way. Let there be prosperity throughout your dead trouble free. Let there Let them be. How you doing? All right, let's hit them up. Let's go um, over, said, and done. Let's get a little Freddie Fender keyboard going over okay. here. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Norman Nardini Show number five. I'm the Wop at the Bop, the Guinea with the Skinny, the last true man, the heart and soul, the Guido and the Speedo. The Greaser, who's a what, Harry? Lady pleaser. Lady pleaser! <laughs> Try this shit. Again. Hey, Tom. Don't drag it on the floor. <laughs> hey, Poncho! Hey, Cisco! I've been wasting my time doing the things that I love. You see, you only live once, but that's enough. If you do all the things you want to do, you are the one. When it's over, said and done. I made up my mind to take my time and be strong. They say it only gets better, but better than worse. Then you realize your fantasies have just begun. When it's over, sit down. When it's over, I know I'll be standing. When it's over, and it's When it's over, I know I'll be standing When it's over, and it's done A little older 
doing now but still having fun and ain't much change since it first begun now I wouldn't trade a single day for a million and one when it's over saving done it's over, sitting down. When it's over, sitting down. Hey, Poncho, I think we better went. <laughs>